open your Bibles to the 18th proverb. And we'll connect once again with our teaching on confession this week. We are, I promise you, going to talk about how to hold fast to your confession. Amen? Hallelujah. We've talked about a lot of different things over the past couple of weeks, or three weeks, I do believe it is. Uh, in, in reference to confession, about confession, about having the right heart behind confession. There's a lot of things we've covered. And obviously we can't recover them. So I, we encourage you to go home. Uh, we have access for you to watch us either through, uh, directly from our website. You can, you can download our service. You can podcast them, video or audio. Um, you can also go to YouTube. You can go to, if you have Roku, you can go to speakfaith, uh, dot, speakfaith TV or uh, speakfaith.tv. Um, Brother Bill sent me our, our numbers for the month. Now, the, the, our, our previous highest month uh, in the history of our downloads was July, and we had hit about 7,600. Uh, we broke that record last week. We had, were over 9,200 for the month of August. Hallelujah. And Roku has been one of the things that's really thrown that out the top. I mean, just all of a sudden, we're, just people have got Roku boxes. How many know what a Roku box is? Yeah. And it's, an internet, it's an internet TV box. And uh, what you were able to do is you plug it on your internet, either wireless or direct, you know, hardwire, and uh, then you can go out on the internet and subscribe to channels, and one of the channels is, is uh, one that Brother Bill's created called SpeakFaith.tv. Uh, Dr. Bill's on there, we're on there, and now Dr. Jerry Savelle is on there. And uh, you can watch all their archive programs right off that, off of your internet, right to your TV. It, it, it basically is an internet to television interface. Yeah. It allows you to take, pick up things off the internet. You can put your Facebook on there, you can put YouTube on there, there's different things you can access, but we have, uh, but they're channels, and our channel is SpeakFaith.tv. Faith.tv that Dr. Bill has, and that's what we're on. And uh, so you can watch our archive programs right off of that box. So if you're sitting at work and you got a television there, you got internet access, you can buy your little Roku box. Uh, the, the cheapest one's how much, Bill? $49. And the higher end one? Okay, up to 100. So from, so from 49 to 100, depending if you want standard definition, high HD with, you know, all the surround sound kind of capabilities. Depends on what you need. Amen. But, uh, you know, th those are the price ranges. You can buy those, and you hook it up to your internet, and then you can watch all of our archives right on your screen, on your television, which is pretty cool. Yeah. It's better on the television, trust me. I, um, I watched, some, I watched uh, Raymond's channel the other day, and I went to some of old Dad Hagen's archives, and they had the authority of the believer. And then Dad Hagen with his plaid coat on, and, you know, or, you know, of course, this one's from 1991, so that's 20, it's still 21 years old. We put it on the big screen and watch Dad uh, Hagen preach on the authority of the believer. There's a few more of his old, timeless teachings out there. So this just, there's just a lot of good things that you can get a hold of. Amen? So, and you're not limited to just watching this. There's other things. You can, you can hook, subscribe to Netflix on there and that kind of stuff if you want to watch, download movies. But, Brother Bill, you can go to your site and get them cheaper, right? Yes. DrBillBailey.net or? Uh, WOFM.org. WOFM.org. You can actually buy the Roku box offline and it's cheaper than buying it somewhere else. So, there you go. All righty. Proverbs, 18th, 18th proverb, verse 21 says, Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So we've been talking about uh, the power of confession, having right confession, also about having wrong confession, uh, conf or, or wrong motives behind confession. Amen? We've covered a large gamut of things. Now, as, now, now, the Greek word for confession, if we come over to the New Testament and start talking about confession, then death and life and the power of the tongue, we're talking about what you say. You know, you, we said this, you, what you say has bearing. What you say has weight. What you say um, helps govern what's going on in your life. Well, actually, not only helps, it governs yeah. what's going on in your life. And usually what you say is a result of what you've been putting, not usually, I, I, I'm trying to be nice. What you say is a result of what you've been putting in you. Yeah. The Word of God says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. What you put in, you know, so uh, you, you know, we could be wowos, word in, word out. Amen. Or you can be G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. You can also be D-I-D-O. Dumb in, dumb out. <laughs> All right, you speak stupid stuff, you get stupid stuff in return, as a result. Somebody say, help me, Jesus. Amen. Help me, help me, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you here? And so we've talked about uh, the words of our mouth govern our lives. we talked about we've got to find the right words from the right place. You know, you're not going to get it from Oprah or Dr. Phil. 
People sit around and watch. You know, now, there's been a, I'm not going to name a list. Probably list how, how long since I've ever seen these programs. But you can't sit around and listen to Maury or Oprah or Jerry or Montel or whoever else is on in the afternoon. Oh, oh now it's uh, um, a William, the Williams woman. Huh? Is it Whitney? Is it just like the other Whitney? All right, Whitney? Wendy. 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 Like, like the Beach Boy song. Wendy, what went wrong? All right. <laughs> or is that, is that Four Seasons? No, Beach Boy. Oh, Beach Boy. Okay. Wendy. Watch, watch that. I was, I was in a doctor's office. We had to uh, get some, uh, some vaccine for Nathan. You had to have it to go to college. It's required by law. So we're sitting there with the, the, uh, the doctor's office, and they had her on there, and she's giving advice on uh, sex and marriage, basically sex. And I'm thinking, why are you listening to this woman who don't know who anything about anything about your life? Yeah. But they put it on television and all that kind of stuff. Let me tell you, you've got to get your information from the right source. Good. You don't need people that the television, and you, you, know, you, you don't want Ellen trying to tell you what the Bible says about homosexuality. <laughs> are, are you here? <laughs> y'all y'all gone home. Now, we talked about getting your right, the right information from the right place. Where's the right place? Right here. Yeah. The Word of God is where you get information from that challenges and changes your life and keeps you on the right road. Amen? And so we go from there. And then we talk about how the blessing and evil, or blessing or evil, is our choice. Choose you this day, life or death, blessing or cursing. As for me and my house. Did you notice that Joshua didn't go, as for me and my house, we choose death. Uh-oh. That's before Hotel California and Stairway to Heaven came out. Because if, if, you know, the, the modern world thinks, you know, you can go party hardy in hell and get that back stairway up into heaven, you know. Well, no, Hotel California is not where you want to be. You, don't, you know, Nathan li he listened to the words not too long ago because he, he heard me say stuff, and he said, I got chills. You could check in, but you could never check out. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then somebody had on the internet, because he heard us talk about backward masking, you know, from years ago. He went out, and somebody actually has uh, Le uh, Led Zeppelin's um, uh, Stairway to Heaven backward mask. And he really got chills when he heard Satan will give you 666. He didn't think I, he, th he thought I was joking. <laughs> you know, well, anyway, there you go. Uh, we're, we're not going to spend the whole series on backward masking. <laughs> Amen. It's there. They know it's there. Everybody knows it's there. And, and, but he, he got chilled on that one, you know. But, you know, Joshua didn't go. Choose you this day, blessing or cursing, life or death. As for me and my house, we choose the curse and we choose death. You got to be dumber than dirt to choose that. <laughs> deliberately or, or conscientiously. Now, usually what the world happens to the world is they're deceived into believing that their, their actions and their words and so forth have no consequence. Amen. Uh, that's what Satan did. To, you remember we talked about this, how Satan deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden, and where he said, hath God said? Remember that? You know, remember, and she said, the Lord told us not to eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the midst of the garden, nor touch it. Now, that's not what God said. He just said, don't eat it. Yeah. And, uh, and, and she said, lest you die. Well, the, the, he, the Hebrew there says, in dying you'll die. In other words, they died spiritually, then they died physically. But um, Satan said, hath God said that? He knows that the day you eat it, you'll be as gods, knowing both good and evil. Here was, the, here was the deception. They were already as God. God created him in his image and in his likeness. They were the gods of this world. Now, he, they were not God. They were created in his image. They were created a little lower than him. They were a created being. They weren't God himself, but they were created in his image. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so he, he made them the gods of this world. How do you know that? Because the book of Corinthians, I believe 2 Corinthians, tells us that Satan is the god of this world. He didn't get that to start with. It was Adam and Eve. They turned it over when they committed high treason. So Satan became the god of this world. All right, y'all here, y'all going home. Now, don't get weird. I'm not, I'm not saying you're God. You don't, get, you don't get to sit on the throne and rule and with a scepter and, and, and put people in the pit and put people over. That's not what I'm saying. We were created in the image of God. What Satan's deception was, he said, you'll be as God. They already were as God. They were created in his image. And the, the, the eighth psalm, I'm going to get to where I'm going this morning, I promise you. And we're going to get to holding fast. The eighth psalm says, what is man that thou art mindful of him? Amen? Thou hast created him a little lower than the angels. Well, really the word uh, angels there is Elohim. And it means God. It means the majesty, of, uh, majesty and the plurality of three or more. 
Well, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. And uh, it can be translated angels, but then it talked about Jesus. Jesus was not created a little lower than the angels. Hello? No, man was created a little lower than God. And, and actually, um, what is man that our mouth and thou has created him a little lower than the angels? Actually, if you study that out and, and do a literal translation, it says a shade lower. Man was created a shade lower than God. Why? Because he's the creator. God was the creator. You can't be equal as far as being the same because he was the creator. But he created as us as close to himself as he could without making us himself. That was his design. That was his desire. Man is the pinnacle of God's creation. Hallelujah. And he created us to walk in authority, to walk with him. Remember, God would come down in the afternoons and in the cool of the day and fellowship with his man. The angels just flew around and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. He came down to talk to the man. And don't take this as crass or crude. He came down to hang out with man. Because he had created him just a little bit lower than himself so he could fellowship with man. Satan got them to thinking that they would be like, they would be not just a shade lower, they would be equal to or higher if they ate of that fruit. God, and, and, and then attacked God's character and said, he knows that in the day you do that, you'll become as God's, knowing both good and evil. Well, we all know this, that the knowledge of good and evil is not good. I can't minister to the prostitute unless I've been a pro hogwash. Jesus didn't do anything. The Bible says he was tempted at every point like we were yet without sin. He was never a prostitute. He was never a drug addict. He was never an alcoholic. He was never a, any of those things. Yet he was able to minister to everybody that came to him. You don't have to be what somebody is to minister to them. Because it's not your life experience that sets the captives free. It is the anointing that destroys the yoke. Can somebody say amen? It's the anointing that destroys the yoke, not your life experience. Well, I can have more. No, we don't need your compassion. We need the compassion of the Lord that works in you. And the Bible talks about Jesus being moved with compassion and healed their sick. You see, the compassion of the Lord is, it has power in it. It has anointing in it. Can somebody say amen? Yeah. Your compassion is, is human sympathy. But see, it's not anointed. Your human compassion is not anointed. But godly compassion is anointed to destroy yokes. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. So you don't have to go with somebody's went through to help them. Yeah, right. Amen. All you got to do is touch the one who, who, and the word of God says, it, King James says it kind of funny. We, we having a high priest who cannot, who, who, who um, um, cannot not be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. In other words, it's almost a double negative. But it means this. We have a high priest who has been touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows what you're going through. He's, he's, he's experienced it spiritually. And because of that, he, he's the one who goes forth. He's touched with it with an anointing that will destroy the yoke. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. So we talked about blessing and choice, good and evil. Satan tried to see them. They, they fell for it. And, you know, and they turned against God. No, but the Bible tells us, choose you this day life or death, blessing or cursing. You know, therefore, Joshua said, I, as for me and my house, we choose life. Amen. Why? Look, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure out that, that dying with destruction and misery and poverty and calamity and death and, and evil around you is not a good thing. Hello? What's, what's, what's good? To live out your days in the peace of, of God. Amen? To walk with him. To, to be like the psalmist said, surely goodness and mercy shall follow thee all the days of thy life. Amen? Hallelujah. It's not, it's not surely like, you know, Laverne and Shirley. It's like, surely, yes, you are Shirley. <laughs> Amen? Somebody said, I got three angels, surely, goodness, and mercy. Well, that's cute, but that's not biblical. <laughs> All right? There's no angels named surely, goodness, or mercy. Hallelujah. Uh, goodness and mercy are, 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 um, are forces that emanate from God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so we talked, we talked about having a confession, talked about speaking the right things, and you know, you have to go back and listen to all this, talked about getting the things from the Word of God, saying what the Word says, and listen, tell you, I'll tell you, there's, there's times you don't want to. How many of you have ever been there, don't want to say the right things? <laughs> Are you here? I've heard people talk about telling other people's stories, they had a cuss word, so they could just cuss and, and not cuss. That's not where you want to be. 
All right? You want to be where your words are seasoned with grace. They minister grace. It's all seasoned with, with grace. So they season, minister grace to the ears of the hearer. You want to speak things that are full, are full of life and not death. Amen? You want to have, your, your, you know, have a, a, a watch put over your mouth that you might not sin against God. We talked about these things. You want to say what the Word says. When you're hurting, it's easy to say, I'm going to die. Well, is that really what you want? Do you really want to hold fast to that? Yeah. Are y'all here? You gone home? Anybody want to go say I'm, I'm I'm broke and dead? I'll be I'll be broken. I'm gonna die, broken and dead. I didn't. I brought nothing in this world. I can't take anything else. So I may as well just go ahead and be dead and broke now. Brother, I pray for you that you hold fast to your confession. Do you really want me to say that? Every day, every. I'm talking to you. Is that really what you want me to say? You want to jump aside when you say stuff like that? Go, yeah, I agree with you. You hold fast to your confession. We agree it'll come to pass in Jesus' name. Now, what you really want me to do is come up beside you. We pray for a crop failure. Yeah. May every word you just spoke die and be dead seed and, and seed that won't germinate and seed that rots in the ground and won't produce. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Please. Please pray that, Pastor. Yeah. Amen. As a matter of fact, why don't you get out there and dig it up? Amen. Put some Roundup on it. I'm going to tell you, ground, uh, you need to put some Holy Ghost Roundup on it, because I'm going to tell you, just digging up sometimes don't even cut it. We've, we've cleaned our flower beds out twice at the street this summer, once before the girls went back to Tulsa, and once when we got back. We came back from Tulsa, and they had grown up, I'm, I'm telling you, there was high as the floor to the top of this plant. The flowers were down there like this. Oh, man. The weeds were up to here. I mean, uh, I beg your pardon, I never promised you a weed garden. That's what I had, a weed garden. I know it's a rose garden, but I, we, we, we had a weed garden. Boy, that, and we pulled them up, pulled them up, and, and I have, we have, just have it rounded up. We're going to put round up. Good day. Guess what? It's like, it's like Schwarzenegger. They, they are back. It's like they tell you, I'll be back. And you know, there they are. Bermuda grass, you know. They're, your words are seed. We talk about how, how our words are seed. And when we speak things, so here's the thing. What do you want? What do you want to be the outcome of what you say? Because if you don't want what you're saying, you've got to change what you're putting in so you can get a different saying. That's good. That's right. And then speak the word. Now, once you speak the word, it's not enough to come into church and have Pastor Ed preach a confession service and everybody go out and go, Woo, that was a good sermon, praise God. I'm going to go home and tell all my friends they, should, they need to listen this morning, uh, you know, download a Pastor Ed preaching on confession. Glory to God, that was a good sermon. And go on about your business and not do anything about it. No, you've got to hold fast. You've got to lay hold of what you're saying and lay hold of it and lay, uh, be, hold fast to it and not be moved. It's easy to be moved. Listen, I'm going to tell you, we're living, we talked about this, we're living in difficult times. We're living in times where, you know, I'm going to tell you, it, it's just the pressure, the pressure, the pressure can almost be crushing. People are dealing with stuff that they've never had to deal with before. You just never had to deal with before. Yeah. Not in our lifetime. This is the longest recession. Uh, or you can call it whatever you want. You can call it a recovery. When you're over 8% for 42 straight or 43 straight months now, it's not a recovery. We had unemployment for eight, 42, 43 straight months higher than 8%. And that does not include those who just gave up or ran out of their benefits. Right, right. The true number is around 17% unemployed or underemployed. Unemployed and underemployed is at 17, between 17 and 19%, depending on who you get your figures from. It's difficult. But I want to tell you something this morning. What do you do when faith seems lost? I mean, a hope seems, a victory seems lost, and faith, faith weak and victory lost? We go back to what we know to do. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something. There's not, a, there's not enough money out there to fix all the problems. You know, understand this. There's not enough money just laying around for you to fix all your problems. We're going to have to go back to what we've done before in the past. Go we're going to have to say what the Word says, and we're going to have to hold fast to it. And we're going to have to stand in the middle of the storm when it's beating our, let me just use a, a, sec, a, a secular expression, beating what seems like your brains out. That's a negative confession. It's not, well, you understand what I'm talking about. It's, listen, how many of you have ever been hitting your feet when that, where your head was two seconds before, spiritually speaking? I don't want to I don't want to confess that. Honey, you don't have to confess it. We saw your feet. <laughs> Hello? We saw them up there. Please keep your short shoes on next time when that happens. Anyway. 
Once we get, once we're back to going what we said, we got to speak it. We got to hold fast to it. Amen. The storms of life are coming. Yeah. And for a lot of us in this room today, they're here. Amen. You're not in the eye, then you got to go through the eye, and then the other side hits. Yep. How many of you ever been in a hurricane before been in the middle of the eye? I have. Yeah. A number of years ago, one of the hurricanes came up here, and it was still like a, level, a, 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 a category one when it got here. And it was the weirdest thing when, when the eye passed directly over, it passed over our house, and it was nothing. It, it, the wind stopped everything, and then just let, let it on, boom, here it come again. That's a weird feeling. Well, don't think. Some people talk about the calm before the storm. You know, that's, that, maybe that expression came from being in the eye of a hurricane. Because, you know, you thought everything was over, next thing here comes from the other direction. You may, have been, you may have been going through things and thinking, my God, this can't last any longer, this can't last any longer. you got to stop looking at what, what can last any longer, and you got to stop looking at what will put you over no matter what's going on. That's great. That's we all have to do that. I'm preaching to me. I'm preaching to, to my wife and my son and my daughters who are going to listen to us later. Yep. We all have to go back yes, we do. to saying what the Word says, and then we have to lay, f f hold fast to it. It is, the, it is our life preserver, as it were. It is what will keep us afloat in the middle of the storm. Amen? Hallelujah. Look with me, if you will, over to Hebrews, uh, the fourth chapter. And there's, listen, I'm not just talking about holding fast because we're, we got, you know, uh, the, the certain family constitution. You know, how many of you ever heard that old term, old country term? They talk about you got the such and such family constitution, meaning your makeup is, you know, your family on that certain line of the family was just, just strong-willed, you know, people who wouldn't give up, and they call that their constitution. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. I'll tell you what constitution you have. Father, Son, Holy Ghost constitution. You got the greater one on the inside of you this morning. Hallelujah. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Hallelujah. You got one on the inside of you. If we will begin once again to trust in him and lean to him and put our confidence in him, he will and, and uh, is ready to right this moment rise up and lift you up and put you over in the realm of faith. Glory to God. So that you can stand against the storm and come out a winner on the other side. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4, there's a reason we can stand, we can hold fast. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens. Now don't you read anymore. I'm going to read this. Jesus, the Son of God. Who's our high priest? Jesus. Come on. Who's our high priest? <laughs> Where is he? He's passed into the heavens. He's seated at the right hand of the Father where he ever lives uh, to make intercession for us. Thank God we have a great and mighty high priest. Amen? The Bible tells us, seeing then. In other words, because we have this high priest, Jesus, he's already passed over. What? He's already faced the enemy. He's already defeated him. He's already been resurrected. He's already seated, ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He's sitting there right now. And because of that, let us hold fast our confession, our profession. Yeah. Let us hold fast. Why? Because Jesus has already made the way. There is a reason that your confession, now the word confession and profession, profession, profession and confession come from the exact same Greek word. So it just depends on how you translate them. You want to translate it, confession, you can, profession, you can, doesn't matter, it's the same word. All right? And he says, let us hold fast to it. Now, the Greek word, translated profession or confession, means, now there's a lot of different means, one of, the, one of the, the primary means is to say the same thing as. Now, I know we think confession uh, is going to, you know, a lot of times in the church world is going to a priest and confessing their sins, and there's, there is the confession of sin. I understand that. But we're talking about something different right now. We're talking about making declarations concerning our future. We're talking about changing circumstances of life. We're talking about framing our worlds with the power of God's Word, and that is called our profession or our confession, and, you know, we are to speak the same thing. We're to say what the Word says about it. Oh, God, I know you want to look at it and say this. That we, that we're sunk. As long as there's a little bubble up in the top of the car that <laughs> you can breathe, you're not sunk. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And when the Lord will, with the way, with uh, with the temptation, make a means of escape. Amen. Like Brother Hagin said, you know, live or die, sink or swim, go over, go under. He said, sometimes like we're going to do all of it. <laughs> Amen. 
That was that. The sink, die, or get, and go on. He said, he said there were times it looked like they were going to do all of it. So you think Dad Hagen just lived high on the hog. He, you, you go back this to his old stuff. One time he sold his car for junk and then wore out three pair of shoes preaching, hitchhiking, taking the bus. He sold his car for junk because it was worth more as junk than it was to drive it. That's bad. Y'all here? Some of you think, oh, I need a new car. If, if yours is so bad, it's more, it's more, worth more as junk than it is to drive it, then you're like he was. But we got to keep speaking the word. We got to keep speaking the word. Can you say keep speaking the word? And then we hold fast to it. We, we hold fast our profession. It means to cause a state. You understand what I mean by state? As, you know, the, the state of something. Not, not North Carolina, but the state of something. To cause a state to continue on the basis of some authority or power. To hold, to keep, to cause, to continue. This comes from the Greek-English lexicon based on somatic domain for the United Bible Societies. Look at that. To cause a state to continue on the basis of some authority or power. To cause your state of victory to continue on the basis of the authority of the Word of God. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Amen? God's Word is the, the, the basis of authority, which we can cause the state of what God's Word says to continue in our life no matter what's going on. Listen, it's, I didn't say it'd be easy. I didn't say you'd, be, you'd wake up and face challenges. I didn't say it'd be days you, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be days you'd wake up and the devil would be sitting at the foot of your bed saying, you're going under today, dude. And when you lie down at night, he said, tonight's your last night. You're going under this night. Hello? Enjoy your last night in your house. The bank's coming tomorrow to take it. I didn't say that, I didn't say that wouldn't happen. But I did say, and the Word of God says, you can cause the state of victory to continue based on the authority of God's Word by holding fast to what God's Word says. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen or amen or help me or, or glory to God or it's so. Amen. We, 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 have to, we have to go back to be able to, you know, and listen, I, I know. I know pressure's been on me. Pressure's been on my wife. Pressure's been on the church. Pressure's been on you. There's a pressure out there. The world, the, the devil wants to crush the church. He wants to destroy the church. Why? Because he sees his days are short. He sees if the church rises up and walks in our authority, that things can be happening where, where nations are turned in months and, and we, years and, and not decades and millennia. We just had a missionary in last week or the week before. When was, when was he here? Week before? Okay, two weeks ago. Their 10-year plan is to graduate 50,000 Bible school students from Raymond in that country. 50,000! We've graduated 43,000 in 20, uh, almost uh, about 37 years. Right up to date right now from Ramos. 26 from the American campus, another uh, 17 to 20,000 around the world in, in 37 years. They're talking about doing 50 in 10. We talked about the supply lines being cut off. See, the church has got to get back. You know, it, that we, 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 have, we have harvest and famine. So we have harvest and famine. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We hold fast our confession. Um, another uh, Greek study says to, to be strong, mighty, to prevail. It means to lay, to lay or to take hold of. Um, it signifies to hold fast firmly. In, in relationship to confession. Hold fast that confession. Hold firmly your confession. Don't let it go. It is your life rope to victory. I said it is your life rope to victory. What God's Word says. Hello. I said I'm preaching to me too. Amen. I'm not, I'm not putting you down. I'm not saying that, you know, Pastor Ed's got it together. And he's the only one in the church that's got together here. Lord, have mercy. We're under pressure just like you. We're facing things every day just like you. Hallelujah. Thank God. I thank God that, we, we, that even when we, when we get frustrated and we don't know what to do, there is still the Holy Ghost on the inside. Yes, thank God. And he wants to point us to a certain direction. Hallelujah. And he keeps pointing us back to the things we always have known. And that is the, to live and to walk in the Word of God, to hold fast our profession. Amen. Amen. Y'all here, you're going home. 
We are the head and not the tail. We are above only and not. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 with me, if you will. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're not going to read verses 15 through 61 or so because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Hallelujah. Being made a curse for us. Glory to God. But Deuteronomy chapter 28. He says, It shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. The Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Stop there. How many? No, listen. Let's, let's bring this New Testament. And it'll come to pass if you'll take the word of God, put it in your mouth, act in the word of God, and hold fast your confession of faith, mm -hmm. that all these blessings will come on you. Amen. Yep. The Lord will set thee on, on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee. Listen to this. Not just come on thee, but overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Well, what are we saying? Be doers of the word. Feed on the word. Speak the word. Declare the word. Amen. And God said. Remember what we read earlier? Seeing then. We have a high priest who's passed into the heavens, Jesus Christ. Let us hold fast. There is a reason that this works. There is a reason that if we'll hold fast our confession, it works. It's not that, you know, you're, you're, cha you're uh, Christian science or, you know, denying stuff or being weird or some type of meditative thing, you know, Eastern mysticism. It is because Jesus Christ, the head of the church, the triumphant, victorious one, has gone before and entered in. And now he sits as a high priest over what we say. And when we speak it... He's the high priest of it. And when we have, he says, hold fast our profession. When we say the same thing that the word says, he guarantees. He guarantees its performance. And here the writer goes on and says, and all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city. Where are we this morning? We're in the city limits. We're in Greensboro, North Carolina. Everybody sitting in this room right now, you're in the city. Now, some of you watching by the Internet, you're, you're in the city this morning. Some of you aren't. That's okay. We got you covered. And blessed shalt thou be in the field. That's out in the county or out in the rural area. Are you here? So whether you're in the city or you're in the rural area, you're blessed. Everybody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed in Greensboro. And I'm blessed when I get to the county. I'm blessed when I get to another city. It just doesn't matter where I go. I'm blessed. Say it, I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body. Women, have babies. Some of you thinking, dear God, I've already been through that. I'm not doing that again. All right, well, <laughs> the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, the flocks of thy sheep, blessed be the basket in thy store. This basically means your source of income. You understand, raised, they were raising cattle, they were raising vines, and whatever they were doing that was causing money to come in, they were blessed. So start saying, my job is blessed. My job's blessed. I'm blessed in my labors. Yeah. I'm blessed. I mean, I, let's go back. I know some people have. A, I don't like this person, but you know, you know, God forgave her, and she's in heaven, and and uh, she she was she loved the Lord. But she, Tammy used to sing. Tammy Faye, you sing that song. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Amen. Just say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Just stop there. That's good enough. <laughs> Amen. Just say, I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in. How many came in this morning? Okay, just a hint for those who didn't raise your hand. The only reason you're in the building right now is because you came in. You didn't get translocated. Scotty didn't beam you over. I mean, maybe you were playing, playing an RPG and you really think you were beamed over. You weren't. You walked in. So, how many came in this morning? Amen. Get them up and hold them up. Now, the crew that came in say, I'm blessed. Why? He said you'll be blessed when you come in. So you came in this morning. You're blessed. Oh, 
But then he also said, where am I? And blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. So you know what you're going to do this morning? When you get up and you walk out the doors, go, I'm blessed. Why? Because you went out. You were blessed when you came in. You're blessed when you go out. Amen. I'm preaching that. <laughs> At least I'm much better than you're saying amen. <laughs> just, just, just say it. All right. Then he goes on and says this, The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. Right. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. Amen. You don't have to be concerned about Sister Bucket Lips <laughs> or Brother Garbage Mouth. They may rise up against you, but the Lord shall send them out in derision and in seven different ways. In other words, he's going to scatter your enemies. They may be organized when they come against you. They'll be disorganized when they leave. Amen. They may be focused like a laser beam when they show up. Are you here? They'll be a scatter gun when they leave. They'll be all over the place. Why? Because the Lord is the glory and the lifter of your head. The Holy Ghost is in this, this, old, this old King James word, the, your re-reward. What's it mean? He, cover, he, 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 he rings up the rear. He covers your backside. He's got your six. Hallelujah. You don't have to be afraid of what they're going to do to you at work and the gossip that's got going on. You don't have to be afraid about somebody undermining you. Your Lord, the Lord, the Lord. Say, the Lord is your defense. Say, the Lord is my defense. My enemies may rise against me one way, but he's going to scatter them so that they flee seven ways. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen to this. The Lord shall command, not a, but the blessing. Amen. Not a blessing, but the blessing. If you go to Genesis 22 and you go to Hebrews 6, that blessing is the blessing of Abraham. And God swore to Abraham. Here's the way that my wife had asked me about this last night, and I had to, you know, she said, well, that banner we used to have hanging up, the, the, the burgundy one. She said, what did that scripture say? And it's Hebrews 6, 14 from the Weymouth translation, saying, saying, surely I will bless you and bless you and increase you and increase you. And the verse before that says, God said, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. It wasn't just a, 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 a off-the-cuff comment. It was God swearing by himself to Abraham. And God's word says here in Deuteronomy that he will command the, not a, but the blessing. That's nothing to make you shout. Y'all frozen chosen, y'all Pentecostals. Hello. Come on now. We don't use the word Pentecostal, we use charismatic. Pentecostal! <laughs> Amen. Amen. Are y'all here? You gone home again. The Lord shall command the blessing of what? B being blessed and blessed and increased and increased. Hallelujah. Upon thee in thy storehouses. Margin says barns. Y'all get it? Barns. Not singular, but plural. All right. He's going to command the blessing of blessing you and blessing you and increasing you and increasing you on your barns. What does that mean modern day? Bank accounts. Pastor, you facing anything? I'm facing stuff. You know what? You know what's going to set me free? It's what's going to set you free. You know what's going to change our li my life? It's going to change your life. It's going back to what the Word says. God said he will come. Hallelujah. Command. Yes. What happens when God commands something to do something? Hello. My word shall not 
return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the thing whereunto I sent it. Hallelujah. Isaiah, I believe, 55. Yeah. Yeah. For as the rain cometh, let's look over there. Hold your place. Take one of those little doobly daddies you got in your Bible. <laughs> You know those doobly dallies are, you know? Those, those, book, those markers. I'm going to use my pages here. Run over to Isaiah. Because <coughs> God said he's going to command something. Amen? Glory to God. Verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways your ways, saith the Lord. Now stop there. What's he mean? I don't get uptight when the economy goes bad. I don't get in fear when the economy's bad. I'm not uptight when your bank account says you're in trouble and the bills say you're going under. I don't, God doesn't get uptight. God didn't get uptight when you go to the doctor. He says you got six months to live. God just don't get uptight. He thinks on a higher plane. Hallelujah. He thinks in a different realm. Glory to God. His thoughts are not your thoughts or his ways are not your ways. What do you do? You lay hold of them. You say the same. Remember, go back to confession. You lay hold of his thoughts and his ways by saying what he says. Glory to God. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I, that was a curtsy. It's also picking up my glasses. Hallelujah. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Well, thank God. Thank God. Oh, I just found out from the Bible. Oh, hallelujah. That I don't have to be limited by how I can figure out how to get out of the mess I'm in. Glory to God. I'm not limited to trying to figure out what am I going to do next. Glory to God. There is one who has a higher way of thinking and a higher way of doing. Glory to God. That's far beyond my abilities to reason and to figure out. Glory to God. And I can tap into How do you mean tap into? I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of the man the things God has prepared for them that love him. But then that same, that same passage, Paul goes on and says, but, that's a Holy Ghost but, <laughs> ye have the mind of Christ. Yes. There is an anointed thinking. I said there is an anointed thinking that lifts you up out of human ability and human reasoning into the realm of the one whose ways are not your ways and whose thoughts are not your thoughts, that is higher than the earth than heaven as heaven is to the earth. Hallelujah. Those, things, those thoughts and ways are higher than yours. Amen. And he says, As far as the rain cometh down from, and the snow from heaven and returns not thither, but what, listen, what does this word do? You know, this, uh, this rain do? But watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall. Now he's making a comparison between rain coming down and causing seed to bring forth into bud and produce a harvest. He's compared that to what? So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please and prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Just like the rain comes down and waters seed and it brings forth the harvest, God said, my word goes out. And when it won't come back to me. How does it go back to him? Father, I thank you. Your word says in 1 Peter 2, 24, by his stripes. You're returning his word to him. He said, it won't come back void. The angel told Mary, now King James translates it funny. If you study it out and, and do an exegesis of that pet scripture over in Luke, where the angel told Mary, she said, how shall this be? See, I know not a man. He said, no word from God, uh, um, for with God all things should be impossible. You study that out, the Greek actually says, no word of God is void of the power necessary to bring it to pass. No word from God. What does it say? My word goes out of my mouth. 
it performs, it accomplishes. And God said, now, now, run back over to Deuteronomy. No words void. God said, my word will accomplish. Isaiah 55, 1 through 14, or 8 through 14, 15, 16. So here we have God saying of his own word that when I speak it, it does exactly what I said. When it's returned to me, it doesn't come back void. It accomplishes. Everybody say it accomplishes. Now with those things in mind and those passages uh, laying as a, as a, as a um, foundation to what I'm about to read to you, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And all thou settest thy hand unto, he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Hallelujah. Think about that. The Lord said when I command it, when I speak it, it does it. And I'm commanding. When you put the word in your mouth, I command the blessing on it. Y'all act like cow at a new gate. Have y'all not heard this before? Are y'all being stirred up this morning? Let's go back. God, God said. He also said, I am not a man that I should lie, neither the son of man that I should repent. He said, if you'll do what the word says, I will command. He didn't say he's going to give you a little Brill Cream, a little dab will do your blessing. Some of y'all remember Brill Cream. You know, you put a little dab. Just don't switch the boxes on your dad when he comes in off a second shift with the toothpaste. My brother did that to my dad. About half asleep, shh, brill cream on the toothbrush. Didn't take long to figure out that wasn't good. My brother, he also bought a box of AIDS one time. You know, remember AIDS? They were, they were a laxative that was chocolate. He thought it was chocolate candy. <laughs> we won't even get, you figure out the picture. <laughs> he just, he went through that box, man. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> he sounded like, he sounded like a woman over at a church going, help me, help me, Lord, help me, Jesus, hallelujah. Anyway. <laughs> He said that if you would do these things that God himself, God said, I will command the blessing on you. Amen. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't use that illustration. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself as he hath sworn unto thee. If thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And listen to this. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground, in the Lord which the, the, in the land which the Lord thy God swear unto thee, uh, swear unto thy fathers to give thee, the Lord shall open, shall open unto thee his good treasure. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. You ever gone to a bunch of kids with a candy bucket and open it up? Boy, they, they swarm on that stuff. And then and they, they just dig around in there. Now, some of them just, just don't give a rip. They just grab. Yeah. And then you got, the, you got the picky one. That's the one I'm after. He says he's going to open it to you. You can take what you want. You can get what you want. You can grab, you can grab a whole handful. Or you can pick in there and get exactly what, you know, that flavor you want this morning. Now, let me, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm picky. When it comes to bags of candy, like if you got a bag of um, those little Hershey's, little, little mini things with, with Mr. Good Bar and Special Dark and Hershey with almonds and regular Hershey and, and, and all that kind of stuff. What, Nathan? And crackles. <laughs> now, I'll open up that bag, and if I get in there first, you won't find many Special Darks left. 
Actually, you won't find many special darks and Mr. Good bars left because I put the two together and eat them. <laughs> I just like that flavor. I take I don't know one of each, put, it, put them together. And <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. And I have to get in there before Janie gets in there because she likes the Mr. Good bars <laughs> and the crackle. And Nathan, he just get, and Nathan he eats it all. <laughs> so we have to hide it. Anyway, <laughs> he'll open unto you his good treasure, the heaven to give rain into thy land in the season, and to bless all the work of thy hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And here's where we get this other scripture we use all the time. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. Thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them. Thou shalt not go away from any of the words which I command thee to, do, to the right hand or to the left to alter, uh, to go after other gods to serve them. God has promised you. I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Are you like Paul on the boat where the angel of the Lord stood beside him that night? And they were, on, they were on the rock, and the ship was being tossed, and the angel said, Fear not, Paul, for the Lord will deliver you and all that are with you. Only the sh uh, no man's life shall be lost. Only, this, only the ship will be lost. And he went up on the deck of the ship the next morning and said, There stood by me this night the angel of the Lord, yeah, yeah. and said that there not, not one life is going to be lost. Not one life is going to be lost. And then Paul made this statement. And I'm going to ask you this morning, can you make this statement? Wherefore, men, I believe God that it shall be even as it was spoken to me. Do you believe God that it shall be even as it has been spoken to you this morning? That God will make you the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath. That he will command the blessing on thee and thy storehouses. Can it be your testimony that I believe God that it shall be even as he has spoken it unto me? Amen. Glory to God. I'm telling you, church, God's word is true. <coughs> God's word is real. God's word is the answer. Amen. Amen. Whatever you're facing, and I know a good number of people, it's been finances. There are people not going to doctors because of finances. And they're not doing this because of finances. And they're struggling over here because of finances. But God said, amen? amen. I said God said. The economist said that it's the worst post-World post II economy we've ever faced. Yeah, and, on, and, and, as a, and as a as a citizen of the country, I mean, I have a vested interest personally on, as a natural person in a, in a natural country to, to vote certain ways and to do certain things and, and to take certain positions. You know, politically, I believe the church should be involved as, as people, the people in the church individually should be involved with their nations and voting the right way. Yeah. I believe that without a doubt. But if the, if the majority of people get together and vote the wrong way and vote against what God has, that don't mean you got to go under. Because right. God said that he would command the blessing on you. He would command, I think, I like it. If he used the word A, it still would have been good. He would command a blessing on you. That would be, oh, well, we, of course, then there have been arguments what that, what that was. But he didn't use A. He used the. So he's talking about a specific blessing. He's talking about the blessing of Abraham. Mm -hmm. He said, I'll command the blessing on you. Anybody excited yet? Anybody, I mean, listen, now listen, I believe you've been stirred by the Holy Ghost this morning. I believe that the Spirit of God stirred you up on the inside this morning. But when you walk out those doors, I want you to say what we read earlier. I'm blessed going out, hallelujah. And when you drive out the city limits of Greensboro, say, I'm blessed in the country, hallelujah. That's where field can be translated country too. You know, some translations do. When, I, when, you, get, when you go back into Winston-Salem or High Point, say, I'm blessed in the city. When you get up and go in your house, say, I'm blessed coming in. When you go back out, say, I'm blessed going out. Amen. 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 
Hallelujah. Stand up and shout it. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. The blessing of Abraham is on me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My God blesses and blesses me. He increases and increases me. I walk in the blessing of Abraham. Hallelujah. Shout. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Yes. Glory to God. I'm telling you right now, my bank account may say one thing by numbers, but God said he commands the blessing on it. He, bless, he, he commands the blessing on my savings account. He blesses the blessing. He commands the blessing on my, my investments. Hallelujah. Amen. And my wife's investments. Everything's in our, both our names. We don't have a single thing. We, we're, we're together. <laughs> Plan on living and dying together. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about getting in the car wreck at, at 42 or 50. Oh, that's, that's, that's gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Or 62 or 72. We're planning on living out our days, full days, length of days, kicking up the feet and going home. Blessed! Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, blessed! And leaving an inheritance to my children's children. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it don't look like it right now. He commands the blessing on my storehouses. Amen. God said, he, he even took the time to say, my word that goeth forth out of my mouth shall not return to me void. This wasn't a prophet Say now the Lord says, he wrote first person, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It wasn't in sermon, it wasn't sermonizing, some people say. God said, I'm going to make this real clear. When I say it, it happens. Amen. Lift your hands this morning and say, thank you, Father. You command. Say it. Thank you, Father. You command the blessing on my storehouses. In Jesus' name. Eyes closed, head bowed. If you're here this morning and Jesus Christ is not the Lord of your life, I want you to raise your hand. I want to pray with you today. We can lead you into a prayer. If you're, pray if you're on the Internet and you're watching this and you're not born again, just right there where you are, just raise your hand. Now, I may not see it, but the Lord does. I say, Pastor, I, I'm born again. I know that, but I'm, I'm backslid. I'm not serving the Lord. I need to get right with God. Would you raise your hand? Same thing on the Internet. If you're sitting out there in your living room or... I don't care if you're in your car, uh, listen to this on, on some type of device. Just raise your hand in the car. The Lord sees it. Third offer. If you're here this morning, you're born again, love the Lord with all your heart, walking in everything you know to walk, but you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost. We mean exactly what Acts 2, 4 says. They were all filled with the Spirit and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. If, you're, if that's you, raise your hand. Okay. And no one in this room, I believe, you know, everybody, I'll, I accept your testimony, you're all saved, but we, may, we have people watching. We, like we said, we have, you know, um, close to, t we're going to have 10,000 in September. Lord. We have close to 10,000. We got, got close to 10,000 this month, people watching and downloading over the Internet. So this morning, wherever you are, stop what you're doing. If you raise your hand and you said, I need Jesus, or I need to get right with the Lord, or I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, this church is praying with you right now. Just raise one hand right to the Lord and say, well, that's, where, that's where your help comes from. It comes from Jesus. Amen. And say, dear Lord Jesus, I thank you that you came to earth. You died on the cross and the Father raised you from the dead. I believe you're God's son. And I believe he raised you from the dead. I confess you as my Lord and receive you into my life. Now, dear Lord, I'm backslid. I'm not walking with you. But right now, I confess my sins before you. I ask you to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. 
and restore me once again to fellowship with my heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Dear Lord, I love God with all my heart, but I haven't been filled with the Holy Ghost. So I receive right now the gift of the Holy Ghost and believe that I speak in tongues as the Spirit gave me utter gives me utterance in Jesus' name. And I just, I just, just um, encourage you, go ahead and speak out what God gives you by the Holy Ghost right now in Jesus' name. Now, if you pray any of those prayers, I ask you to, to contact our office at www.fbc.org. You can email us from the website or you can email us at office at fbc.org. And we just encourage you to continue watching our broadcast. Visit our website. Uh, if you did get saved or get restored to the Lord or get filled with the Holy Ghost, we we ask you to email us because we want to send you some materials that will bless your life and help you walk with God and walk in all that God has for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Also, anybody that's watching wants to help us, help our church and partner with us, there's an online giving tab. Go out there and click on that and partner up with us and be a part of what we're doing for the kingdom of God. And until we meet again, we love you, God loves you, and remember this, that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Glory to God. Amen.